Dr. Zakir is playing with words. It's jugglery of words only. Islam divides peoples of the whole world in two. One is Momin and there is a Kafir. Definitely we don't believe and trust in many things which Islam says. So this brotherhood of universal brotherhood is not possible what Islam wants to enjoin upon us. Islam only creates divisive forces. Even we can know Shias, Sunnis and 70 other castes in Islam itself. Huh? I am putting the question. No problem. Universal, but Islam cannot give universal brotherhood. It's only Hinduism which can give universal brotherhood. Ekam Satya Vipra Bahuda Vadanti, which you have just quoted. Islam does not recognize Killing the cows, killing the kafirs, taking their property, loot, women folk, Islam tells. How brotherhood can come? And you talk of brotherhood is a jugglery of words only. Really speaking, you are talking Hinduism in the name of Islam. The brother has made several comments. And Islam says, Inna lahama sabreen. For verily, Allah is with those who are patient. For brotherhood to prevail, you should be patient. If I'm not patient, there'll be a fight between me and my brother. Islam says, <laughs> in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 153, in For verily, Allah is with those who are patient. And for brother to prevail, you should be patient. And I, I respect my elderly brother out here. He may be having a good study of Hinduism. But I'm sorry that I disagree with him. His study of Islam is a bit weak, I would say. And I do agree with him that Islam, there are two types of people. One is a believer, Mormon, and the other, he said, is a kafir, according to him. In every religion, there are two types of people. Even in Hinduism, a Hindu and a non-Hindu. In Christianity, Christian and non-Christian. In Judaism, a Jew and a non-Jew. In Islam, a Muslim and non-Muslim. So where does Islam differ? And I'm not here to criticize Hinduism. I'm not here to criticize Hinduism. But since you're a learned speaker, I would like to speak on Hinduism because I am a student of comparative studies. I've read the Vedas, I've read the Upanishads. But if just for a small comment, according to the Vedas, it mentioned that the humankind has been created from four parts of Almighty God. From the head, it is the Brahman. From the chest is the Kshatriyas. From the thigh is the Vaishas, the business class. And from the feet is the Shudra, caste system. I'm not here to comment on these, brother. I wouldn't like to. I wouldn't like to hurt the feelings of my Hindu brother. Islam doesn't agree with that. I didn't comment on those things. I didn't criticize any religion. I didn't criticize any religion. I didn't say that this religion is wrong. But you, if you know your Veda very well, you should testify to the audience. Doesn't the Veda say that from the head you have the Brahmins? From the chest, you have the Kshatriya. From the thighs, you have the Vaishya, the business class, learned class, warrior class, business class, Shudras. The Shudras are supposed to be downtrodden. And there are books written by Dr. Ambedkar. I don't want to go into the details, brother. Hinduism, I have learned very well. I respect many aspects of Hinduism. Certain aspects, I don't agree. I have to say because they have forced me to say. Quran says in Surah Anam, chapter 6, verse 108, Revile not those who worship God besides Allah. Let in their ignorance, they will revile Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What I spoke is the positive aspect of Hinduism. That is, they believe in the concept of one God. Regarding a question that, you know, the Muslims, they keep on killing people, they keep on killing cow, you said. Correct? You said that. See, every allegation requires an answer. So time doesn't permit. I'll just pick up a few. Any other, you can come next and ask. I'm here to clarify the misconception. It's my pleasure. Only if I clarify the misconception will the person understand Islam better. Therefore, in our session, we always have a question and session. And we welcome. When anyone criticizes us, I love it. The more a person criticizes and more is logically convinced, will he understand Islam better? That's what I do. Islam said, spread the message of truth with 
حکمہ دا قرآن سے دل سورہ نحل چپٹر 16125 اوضو الہ صحبی لی رب کا بلکمہ والمعزد الحسنا وجادل باللتی احسن that is invite all the way of thy Lord with wisdom and beautiful preaching and argue with them and reason with them in the ways that are best and most gracious regarding the concept of can we have non-wage talking about killing cows etc and there are many non-muslims who say you know you muslims you all are ruthless people you all kill animals just for your information brother a muslim can be a very good muslim even by being a pure vegetarian it's not compulsory that he should have non-veg to be a good muslim but since the quran says in several places you can have the cattle why we shouldn't have the quran says in surah maida chapter number five verse number one it says that Ya yo ladina amunu, O you believe, fulfill all your obligations, and lawful for you are all four-footed animals with the exception named, Quran says in Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse number 5, that Allah has created for you cattle, which are his signs, from it you derive warmth, and there are various benefits in it, and of the meat you can eat. Quran repeats this in Surah Mu'minun, chapter 23, verse 21, you can eat the meat of the cattle. You know, in non-veg, there are doctors available here, even I'm a medical doctor. It's rich in protein. It's rich in iron. And it's very nutritious. In the other food, the level of protein which you get in non-veg, you cannot get in any other vegetarian food. Soya bean, which is supposed to be the best form of protein in vegetable, it comes nowhere close to the non-veg protein. And regarding the concept of killing of cows, if you read the Hindu scriptures, I'm not here to criticize any religion. But brother asks a question, I have to speak the truth. It permits a person to have non-veg. If you read the Hindu scriptures, the sages and sons, they had non-veg. They even had beef. It is later on due to the influence of the other religions, like Jainism, etc., that people were being influenced in the philosophy of Ahimsa of not to kill animals. That they accepted this philosophy in their way of life. Otherwise, Islam is also for animal rights. I can give a talk only on animal rights. Islam is a religion which says they do not overburden animals, treat them nicely, give them food. But when required, they are even created for food. If you analyze the other religions which believe in the philosophy that you should not have non-veg, the philosophy was based on the concept that you should not kill animals because they are living creatures. Therefore, having non-veg is a sin. I do agree with them. If any human being can live in this world, Without killing a single living creature, I would be the first one. The universal brotherhood in Hinduism is that every living creature is your brother. Every living creature, irrespective whether it's an animal or a bird or an insect. I'm asking a simple question that how can a person even survive for five minutes without killing millions of his brothers? Those who know medical science will understand what I'm saying. That Whenever you breathe, there are millions of germs you're inhaling and you're killing. That means in this religion, you're killing your brothers to survive. The universal brotherhood in Islam is every human being is your brother. Brotherhood in faith is every Muslim is a brother. Every living creature is not my brother. But we have to protect the living creature, should not harm them, should not unnecessarily torture them. But when required, you can have them for food. So when the philosophy says that Having non-veg is a sin because you kill living creatures. Today's science tells us that even the plants have got life. Do you know that? So the logic that killing living creatures is a sin has failed. So now, now they change the logic and they say that, see, plants have got life, but plants can't feel pain. Therefore, killing the animals is a greater sin as compared to killing plants. Do you know today science has advanced? And we have come to know even the plants can feel pain. The plants can even cry. The plant even feel happy. So the logic that plants cannot feel pain has failed. What the thing, the cry of the plant cannot be heard by the human ear. Because the human ear has a frequency of 20 cycles per second to 20,000 cycles per second. Anything between this, the human ear can hear. Anything below or above, the human ear can't hear. For example, if a master blows a dog whistle, you know the dog whistle, it's called a silent dog whistle. It blows the whistle, which has a frequency of above 20,000 cycles and below 40,000 cycles per second. The dog 
can hear up to 40,000 cycles per second. So when the master blows the whistle, the dog hears the whistle, but the human being don't hear. It's called as the silent dog whistle. Similarly, the cry giving out the plant cannot be heard by the human being, but they also cry. They also feel pain. There was a brother of us who argued with Maximum, and he told me that, Brother Zakir, I agree with you that the plants have got life. They can feel pain. But you know, the plants have got two senses less. They only have three senses. The animals have got five senses. Therefore, killing an animal is a greater sin as compared to killing a plant. So I told him, brother, suppose you have a younger brother who is born deaf and dumb, two senses less. After he grows up, if someone goes and kills him, will you tell the judge, oh, my Lord, give the murderer less punishment because my brother had two senses less? Will you say that? You will say, my Lord, give him double punishment because he killed a person who was innocent. So in Islam, the logic doesn't work like that, two senses or three senses. Islam says in Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 168, eat of the good things that we have provided for you. That means whatever is good and lawful, you can have. And that's the reason if you analyze the cattle in the world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has his way, almighty God. The reproduction of the cattle is very fast as compared to reproduction of the other animals and the human beings. They reproduce very fast. If I agree with you that no human being should have any cattle, then we will have overpopulation of cattle in the world. And regarding killing of cows, there's a book written by Maulana Abdul Karim Parekh, Gao Hatya, Cow Slaughter, Who is to Blame? And we'll analyze the people that deal in leather, leather of cows, more non muslim than Muslims. Leather, the gent, they deal in that. So the people who are responsible to benefit from the cow slaughter are not the Muslims, the more of them are non muslims So if you know history well, and if you know logic also well, you'll understand that Allah says, eat of the good things we have provided for you. If you can have, there's no problem. And besides that, if you analyze the set of teeth of the herbivorous animal, the cow, the goat, the sheep, they only have vegetables. They have a flat set of teeth. If you analyze the set of teeth of the carnivorous animal, the lion, the tiger, the leopard, they have got sharp pointed teeth. They can only have non-veg. If you analyze the set of teeth of the human beings, if you go in the mirror and look at your teeth, we have pointed teeth as well as flat teeth. If Almighty God wanted us to have only vegetables, why did he give us this pointed teeth? For what? To have non-veg. If you analyze the digestive system of the herbivorous animal, the cow, the goat, the sheep, they have a digestive system which can only digest vegetables. The digestive system of the carnivorous animal, the lion, the tiger, the leopard, they can only digest non-veg. The digestive system of the human beings can digest both non-veg and veg. If Almighty God wanted us to have only vegetables, why did he give us a digestive system that can digest both veg and non-veg? So scientifically, if you analyze, Almighty God wanted us to have both veg as well as non-veg. Hope that answers the question. One misconception at a time so that I can do justice to each other misconception.